Hey, all right, so good morning everyone. If you haven't seen my previous videos, uh, how I got here, then do check it out first and come back to this one. This is a Grand Canyon Whitmore Point. I'm gonna, I already packed up, ready to go. I'm going to Kelly Point uh, right now. I'm gonna ask that lodge uh, that is on the way. Like once I get out of this harder off-road, out there, there is a lodge that I didn't know about, but uh, anyway, there is a bit of civilization here. So I'll ask him to uh, refuel me just in case. It takes away from uh, that feeling, as I was saying, uh, of being remote and relying on the fuel packs and everything that I had. Which I may still rely, I have no idea what the Keller point is, well, like what to expect there. It's actually interesting, yesterday was crazy wind here, I couldn't fly the drone. Um, today I woke up, well who knows, maybe it's like a in the afternoon thing that happens here. Or maybe it was just the weather. Anyway, there is no wind here right now. On my way up there right now, uh, I'm not gonna shoot anything. I'm just gonna stop here because I already shot it yesterday, how I was descending here and all that, uh, just to save time. And once I get out, get out uh, on, a, on a road that I haven't covered yet, uh, past the Whitmore point, then I'll uh, resume shooting. So refueled at that uh, Barton uh, ranch, lodge place. This is the awesome guy that prolonged my journey. Yeah. Uh, it will be interesting test to see if I, because uh, right now I'm sitting at almost full tank. If this is going to be enough for uh, Kelly Point and St. George without touching any fuel packs. Yeah, this wasn't cheap. Uh, six, uh, I think she said, six bucks uh, per gallon. But then again, he charged me, he did whatever, I don't know. Like basically almost full tank costed me 78 bucks, which uh, compared to prices around here uh, in Arizona, yeah, it's like, it's double the price, so if not more. I passed a few gates, uh, BLM roads, uh, no signs that you can't enter, so, and it does say BLM blah blah something road, uh, on GPS at least. And I'm about to be back on the route that leads me to uh, Kelly Point, and it says I'll arrive there at, in three hours. Well, that's what it says. Uh, my pace, maybe I'll be able to trim half an hour off. Uh, we'll see. I, I have no idea. It could be rough out there. Uh, so right now it's 2.30. 2.40 already. So three hours. 
yeah, I'll be there by sunset, for sunset, basically. All right, let's continue. I think of the road to Kelly Point so far. That's a slow crawling. Some ground is semi wet, sort of, but it's the boulders. Uh, like they're big here. Uh, you better come with some clearance. And uh, I pro maybe I haven't seen the uh, toughest stuff yet, uh, but at this pace, whatever Google map tells me, it's like, oh, I'll arrive there in an hour and a half. I don't think so. I'm just thinking of getting out of here tomorrow because this is the exact same path I'll need to take. Uh, and uh, I have a feeling this is not the worst I've seen. It's probably gonna get worse. The ground is definitely feels like it's, uh, I can see on the road, uh, it's been wet recently. There's some puddles still. So who knows what I'm gonna face over there. Uh, like, at this point, I'm a little tired. I kind of feel like, you know, if it, if I didn't make to myself such a big deal about getting to, you know, Toro Weep, then uh, Whitmore Point, then Kelly Point, building fuel packs on top for all of this, I would probably turn around because it's like hours of this, then same way back. Uh, well, the view better be worth it. I guess I'll uh, keep on trading. What else I gotta do? Well, could have gotten to more up faster. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention a few things. So, st uh, fuel update status. To get from uh, Whitmore Point to right now, uh, I don't know if it's uh, halfway to Kelly Point or whatever, however you classify it. It's after the fork where it actually says Kelly Point, uh, something like 27 miles. Uh, so, uh, I'm sitting at about half a tank, uh, getting from Whitmore, uh, that luxury fill, to here. I, well, we'll see tomorrow. Uh, I'm not gonna, till the last drop in the tank, I'm not gonna refuel my, uh, use my uh, fuel cans. Uh, but I have a feeling it's not gonna be enough. I'll have to use the fuel packs before I get to St. George or whatever closest gas station. Uh, well, as you can see, uh, it's quite different uh, landscape here compared to Whitmore Point, uh, which was uh, probably what three hour drive from here. Like very, very different and cold. Like uh, the car was showing me right now, sixty. Uh, 
five Fahrenheit. So I assume it's going to be very cold night tonight. Uh, it's definitely different. But yesterday I was sleeping with windows open uh, slightly, uh, even though with wind, it was beautiful, no sweating, not cold, it's just perfect. Uh, not today. turtle pace like I look at the map I still have so much to go and uh, God, <laughs> I, I almost feel like giving up not that I can do this I can do this it's just timing it's uh, I'm just thinking all this crap I'll have to do again tomorrow I count all this time in the morning so I'll need to leave like very early in the morning to try to get a, get to Moab, well, St. George and Moab, by end of the day, it's gonna be like freaking crazy 14, 16 hours at the wheel or some, I don't know, something like that. But not just highway driving, like this driving, a little stressful. All right, let's keep going. No wonder when I asked uh, several people already, locals, whatever, at the lodge, how's Kelly Point? No one's been here or never even heard of. <laughs> that makes sense. So as you just saw, I bumped into a guy and he's a lifted FJ cruiser, uh, shovels, everything totally overlanding type, uh, chatted around a little bit, he crossed Mojave Desert too, I actually loved it as well, I think so far Mojave, crossing Mojave Desert was maybe my favorite as well, uh, I'll kind of need to come back, uh, watch the footage and I don't know, figure out what the hell is my favorite place. But so far, yeah, Mojave is, I think. So he mentioned that the, uh, the ride is pretty much all way like this. Uh, very rocky, then there's a stretch, it's kind of flat, but then super rocky. Uh, and then the view is basically not worth it. He's like, I first time I've been here, uh, I checked it out. I've seen much better viewpoints of Grand Canyon for less effort. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to see in there, he said. The view isn't that great. Like, for example, he said, like, if, if you were a Toro Weep, uh, this is worse. So, and still from this point to that, he's like, 
uh, took me right now to meet me here about two hours he is a shorter wheelbase uh, uh, so he's kind of treading uh, faster and he's light too it's just FJ Cruiser it's probably what like two ton two and a half max I'm actually quite at wobbly my photons just yeah it, it takes me a uh, takes this big rig uh, a while to get places. Uh, I wasn't even focused on shooting much stuff. So yeah, just kind of chatting around with him. Uh, plus, considering time, it's probably I'll arrive there after dark already. So we we'll only get chance I may see the viewpoint is uh, what, in the morning and pretty much leave right away and then suffer for all of this again. I don't really feel like uh, I've lost my battle here. It's just pretty much waiting the time, risk versus reward. He said there's gonna be lots of tight bushes in there forever, so you're gonna probably scratch a big car. Uh, tight turns as well. And I'm just thinking, well, sure, I can get there, but is it worth uh, scratching my car, possibly bending some more stuff? Um, arriving late at night, feeling all drained, uh, pretty much eat and just pass out because uh, in the tough days when there's been lots of off-road that's what happens it's like I eat I have one beer uh, I, I watch a movie I didn't even get to finish watching the movie I just pass out and that's it so you're fully drained of energy so yeah I'll uh, return uh, somewhere towards the uh, start of a route and camp out so tomorrow possibly I can make it to Moab at decent time uh, decent I mean probably still when it's dark but at least not like at uh, 10 or 11 uh, and I still need to connect with uh, Rob there and BC guys uh, see where they're staying and I don't know maybe hopefully they're not staying at motel but some campground so I can just arrive and park because yeah I'm not doing the whole motel thing As a conclusion for today, sorry it wasn't as exciting. Uh, well, actually, I did uh, tons of off road today, getting out of that spot, uh, getting here for BM BLM roads. So I'm kind of actually feel tired today, even before I started Kelly. I was already, even though yesterday I camped out, felt again like five days ago or so, like really, really tired. Uh, I mean, off roading is fun, no, but it does drain you. Uh, and lots of it can be very, very tired. Uh, and especially stressful too, you know, in tons of parts. Speaking of fuel, since I've been talking about it for a while, uh, I would say uh, here's what would have happened uh, if there was no gas and that lodge at uh, Whitmore Point. I would have uh, completely, because I was sitting, uh, by the time I got out at Whitmore Point to the lodge, I was sitting at uh, roughly 15 liters left. So I would have completely uh, refueled, uh, having maybe five liters spare, because I have 80 liters here, plus I had 15, it would have been 99. My, my tank is about 90, 95 liters. So uh, I would have driven, drove here, 
Uh, driving here, I spent almost half a tank on the full tank from the lodge. I would have continued even without, uh, like if I didn't bump into the guy, I had those feelings already of turning around because there's no way getting there uh, before light and uh, all the way back uh, returning. If I didn't bump into the guy and if I didn't refuel uh, at Whitmer Point, just knowing me, I would have started the Kelly route and looking at that very slow slow uh, crawl, I, I probably would still crawl through like an hour hoping it will be clearing whatever and at that point uh, probably much sooner than today I would have turned around knowing I don't have any more fuel left looking at the map knowing I probably have two more hours of crawling to do plus tomorrow get back and the sign over here says 79 miles to St. George uh, so uh, I wouldn't have gotten stranded if I didn't refuel uh, because I, I would have bailed the route basically seeing how it is so I'm sitting at half a tank right now maybe maybe a little less uh, since it's here uh, well I guess it's enough to get to St. George and I still haven't used any of my fuel packs uh, but it's it's peace of mind to have this much fuel still uh, I have about 14 days, 13 days till the trip uh, in Moab uh, area. There's tons of trails. So potentially with all this fuel, I don't have to get out into civilization to refuel for a while. I can just keep doing the trails without having to constantly uh, get out to Moab, you know, and then do something else and something else and something else. I don't want to push to St. George. Uh, actually, I may, I don't know. Uh, like. Use an Iowa Overlander app and uh, all stays. I don't see any dispersed camping spots here uh, or spots indicated by people for Iowa Overlander app. It's just uh, not that they aren't here, it's just no one indicated that there is something here. Uh, so I'll keep driving, but however, uh, getting close to St. George, there is uh, some BLM spots uh, indicated on the uh, all stays uh, app. Uh, I overland there up, I didn't check, so maybe maybe I'll keep driving to St. George and uh, somewhere in the vicinity, an hour drive from it or something. Maybe I'll uh, find some spot to crash, uh, but currently I think it says it's four hour drive to St. George. Uh, last time I looked on the map, it was like four hours, 20 minutes, so something like that. And as you can see, it's freaking cold, like I'm uh, not wearing socks. And my feet are getting cold. Like it's it's gonna be freaking cold over here tonight. <laughs> Whatever it is. See you guys. Hey comrades, don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you should by hitting that subscription button and also bell notification next to it. So you can actually get my video updates, both in notification and your video feed. And as well, you can support this channel if you like my videos through PayPal or Patreon in the links down below or just after this video.